Thinking of RV ownership? Want to see our beautiful country? Want to be part of the RV lifestyle? Want to learn more? Do you want the freedom? Do you want to travel? Do you want to explore? Then join us at RV Talk Radio. Proudly sponsored by RV Lock. Hello everyone, and this is Rob Scribner from RV Talk Radio. I want to welcome you to episode 15. Today's subject, our main subject today is going to be about why would you want an RV in the first place? What's the fuss all about? Why are people even doing the RV thing? And what else can I even do with my RV? Isn't an RV just for camping? Isn't it like one of those old trailers sitting in a mobile home park? What about the American dream? I don't want to give up my house. I'm trying to buy a house. I live in an apartment. Why would I want to give up those comforts? And what about all my stuff? I got a lot of stuff. What am I going to do with it? Why would I want to give up my stuff? How would I even make income? I have a 9 to 5 job. You can't make money in living in an RV and traveling all the time. Well, today's show, we're going to try to address some of those issues, some of those questions, by talking about all other people's experiences, and also Sherry, my wife, and I have done a lot of full-time traveling, and we've also used our RV for other uses. So, let's talk about those things. And not to mention... The resources. There is no reason why you can't get your questions answered by listening to other great podcasts for RVs. YouTube is endless with videos about RV living and RV tips. And Facebook and lots of and many great books and lots of great blogs out there. There is no reason why you can't get your questions answered about RV living, RV lifestyles, or just using RV as a recreational vehicle. On RV Talk Radio, we like to put emphasis on the RV lifestyle and RV living and all the uses of an RV. The first resources I'd like to tell you about is other podcasts. We've ran into a couple we listen to, and we highly suggest you do too. They've been around a lot longer than we have, and we appreciate their resource and the hard work they've done. One of them is called Living the RV Dream. They have a wonderful show, and they've done over 300 episodes. There's also one called RV Family Travel Atlas. They're an awesome young couple with two boys, I believe. And they do a weekly podcast also. And there is many more. And I'm sorry if I didn't mention them. But please just take your cell phone, pull up podcasts, do an RV uh, RV search in iTunes, and you'll find not only the ones I mentioned in our show, you'll find some others too that I just haven't had the opportunity to listen to yet. As far as websites and YouTube channels, I have a couple of my favorites, and I'll mention them, but I can tell you there's many more, and if I missed them, I apologize. We really like RVTravel.com. Love Your RV, which is done by an independent person who's on the road from Canada and does really good overviews of RV tips. We also enjoy Gone with the Winds, um... RV Education 101, RV Geeks, and many, many, many more. And if I missed any, I apologize. I highly recommend you get on the internet and do some searches. We're still a a fairly new group. We're doing the best we can. Our emphasis is, is about the lifestyle. Why would you want to be an RVer in the first place? And the other big thing is people don't think about all the other uses of an RV and that's our goal. Our goal with RV Travel Buddy 
and RV Talk Radio is to tell you good information and to send you the resources to find more information about your questions. So you don't have to just stay at RV Travel Buddy. Let us find good resources for you and we'll send that information to you. So today on RV Talk Radio, we are going to try to answer or address some of the questions that come from why be an RVer in the first place? And the first answer I have to that is downsizing, less stress. Those two words go together. So obviously, if you're thinking about being a full-time RVer, and I'm kind of addressing that first, then you need to make a plan. And the reason downsizing sounds overwhelming is it is. But what we can't stress enough is once you start the process of downsizing and living with minimal stuff, you'll find your stress level to actually drop. So think about it. We go through life working nine to five, getting that house, getting that car, getting the furniture, getting the insurance, on and on and on. Each one of those things is a responsibility, more stress. So when you start living in a minimal way, you will find automatically a big burden come off your shoulder, shoulders, sorry. Some of those family items that you just can't get rid of, it's pass them on to the kids or put them in storage. If you're younger or a younger couple, put that stuff away, store it, and don't worry about it anymore. Or just get rid of it. If you're a young family with kids, you'll find that having l- less things is good for you and teaches your children ways of living in a practical way. We've also learned that living in a minimal way is a little bit more ego-friendly. You tend to waste a lot less. You buy less, you buy only what you need, and you start being more aware of how much garbage and waste that you produce. You actually start to learn how to utilize your time better, utilize your resources, your dishes, your cleaning, your supplies, All of it, you you just automatically start paying attention to, which in turn reduces stress and gives you quality of life. The next subject I'd like to talk about, why why be an RVer in the first place, is the people. Now, whether you're thinking about full-timing, extended RVing, or just weekend warriors, there's something about RV people, generally speaking, that is very pleasant. I don't know if it's the RVing or the communities, but it tends to bring out the best in people. Some reason, if you're sitting in front of your RV, everybody wants to talk to you or at least say hi and of course if you have a pet or dog that's a great tool for conversations also but I've also heard RVers being very kind and helpful especially if you're having problems it's not unheard of to lift the hood of your car and start working on it and three other people come over to help you It's the nature of the beast. So now, so far, we've found a way to reduce stress by getting rid of stuff. We've also found people to be at their best. Quality of life, friendships, community. Now for my favorite thing that I like to point out, why be an RVer in the first place, is to see new things. Now, 
I've lived in the Northwest, Washington State, and Oregon. So I'm used to the evergreens. I'm used to rain. I'm used to water. So I can't help but be kind of curious of what some of the other regions and what some of the other climates are like. I may not like them. I may love them. But watching it on the travel channel just doesn't cut it. So, just in my experience, and I've only been on the west side of the United States as far as RVing, <clears throat> and having the opportunity to be exposed to high desert cunt country like Central Oregon, or a seasonal area like Utah, or to be in a crazy city or a crazy state, I call it, like Nevada, uh, and going to Las Vegas and Reno area, to being in California and seeing the Redwoods and seeing Napa and all the wine vineyards, all the way down to Arizona, to real desert living, all the way down to the border, and seeing what true desert like living would even be like. I've seen crazy weather that I've never seen before. I've seen extreme heat and lived in it <laughs> for a while. I've seen crazy, crazy lifestyles in places like Vegas. I've seen shows that I would never seen before. I've been to places that showed cactuses that I've never seen before and, and critters I've never seen before. And those memories will never go away. In fact, the more you travel and the more you see, the more you're going to like RVing. Sunsets are different in different regions. Storms and lightning are different in other regions. Water, oceans, living on the coast. It's different all, all the way down from Washington State all the way down to California. The beaches change, the scenery changes, the animals change. And there's only one way to actually see that stuff and it's not through the television. It doesn't give you the comprehension or the feeling that will stay with you forever. And let's talk about the Grand Canyon. How many people have seen the Grand Canyon on the Travel Channel or some show? And you go, wow, that's really neat. Well, I'm telling you, there's nothing in the whole wide world as amazing and as crazy as walking up to the edge of the Grand Canyon live. It's breathtaking. There is no way you could comprehend that through film or recordings, even this talk I'm telling you. You need to be standing on the edge of the Grand Canyon to comprehend the Grand Canyon or to comprehend a monsoon or to comprehend a light show or lightning or little storms going through Phoenix. Unless you're actually there to see it, you haven't seen it yet. And also, the chance to see other cultures, other lifestyles. What's it like for people to live on a wine vineyard? Well, what's it like to be in Utah and have a chance to meet the Mormon community? In fact, I'll talk about that for a moment. I'm not Mormon, but I had the opportunity to go to the temple. And I had a chance to actually go to uh, some a movie theater and actually have Mormonism explained to me and and then the history of the Mormons and I would have never gotten that education unless I was actually there and to tour the whole state gave me even a better comprehension of the history of what Mormons went through and their good and bad sides of everything they did to establish what they are today. And then 
seeing Hoover Dam and understanding the water's going away, it's dropping, or to go down to Arizona and understand their feelings about the border and immigrants. It's a lot different than us folks up here in the West. So, once again, you can't comprehend that through the news. You can't comprehend it through the travel channel. But to spend time to live in the same places, to meet the people, and to understand their view on life and how they see the United States and the world is amazing. And it will open your mind up dramatically. The next subject that I want to address about why be an RVer is a statement that came from some of the folks running the RV park here up in Bothell, Washington. And you got to understand, we're in Boeing area and Microsoft and Amazon and on and on and on. This is very professional businesses up here. And they said that every day, recently, every day, they are meeting people that are going into the or living in RVs or moving into RVs even before they're ready to retire. And the reason is, is the world is changing. Retirement looks a lot different. Not everybody's going to have a pension anymore. We have to rely on, rely on our 401ks or finding ways to save every penny possible in order to have a retirement. And some of us, we're not, you know, Social Security is questionable. We're fortunate, I think it'll be around a while, but once again, it's not really big bucks. And so, I wanna talk about the fact that you can lower your overhead. So what's happening a lot in, in the folks I talked to just the other day at the office are saying they're seeing a lot of it too. Folks are moving into their RVs and really nice RVs, not just little ones. I mean, very comfortable RVs and continuing their jobs and working. But what they're trying to do and what they're, they're accomplishing is lowering their overhead. So think about that. I'll, you can use a house, but I'm going to use an apartment because that's even cheaper. But an RV, if you buy one and you have to finance it, let's say you're going to have a payment of between 400 and 800 a month. Well, a standard RV park will cost you about 500 to 800 dollars a month. So it's kind of a washout. Your apartment or your house payments going to be pretty much close to that and what does go down is the maintenance the cost of owning a house taxes those things drop utilities and uh, costs that are associated to owning a house and an apartment those areas can be reduced so typically and Sherry and I are doing the same thing, is we're in our RV first before we hit the road. And we're actually a young couple, so we won't even see Social Security for another nine years. So this is the time to get rid of debt. This is the time to get rid of mortgages. This is the time to pay off cars. This is the time to get rid of those credit cards. This is the time to get rid of personal loans. Any kind of wasteful spending that you do, this is the time to get rid of it. And the RV is the tool to help you get there faster. What everybody will tell you when it gets time to either traveling as a young couple and working on the road or retiring, you're going to have to learn how to live with less or less income to utilize the money you made, the money you've saved, or the money you're making now, you probably won't making, 
you probably won't be making as much money as you did if you were just in a stick and brick type of house. So reducing your debt, getting out of debt, what a perfect opportunity to do it. And an RV is the tool to do it with. The next thing that I've noticed, and I'm talking for Sherry and I, is now that we're in our RV full time, but we're still working, we go outside more. Maybe it's because you need a break from living in smaller quarters. But for some reason, people are walking around and people are walking their pets and, and there's a draw, even if it's raining, to go outside. And for Sherry and I, this has been another goal for health to get more exercise. I know if you looked at some of our pictures, you say, well, yeah, you guys need some exercise. Well, yeah, we do. And Sherry and I both have been in jobs sitting behind a desk and then we've been paying the consequences for that. We're overweight. But now we're finding ourselves riding our bikes more, taking Cinder out, our chocolate lab, and, and, and uh, letting her run with us with the bikes to get her keep her weight down. And she's she looks great. <laughs> I only wish Sherry and I looked as good as her dog. And we tend to, when you're outside, you tend to meet more people. So, you, you, you know, I got to tell you, and I've said this in other shows, I've met more people and friends in the last month and a half that Sherry and I have been full-timing than five years of living in apartments while we were working our jobs. Same jobs, but we changed to this, living full-time in our fifth wheel, and it doesn't even, I mean, it's totally different. We've totally met dozens of people, new friendships, exchange phone numbers, keep in contact, totally different. And I think it's the fact that we, one is we all have something in common, and two, we're outside more. We're meeting people. It's wonderful. To also answer the question, why be an RVer in the first place, I'm going to combine two subjects together. One is eating better and shopping smarter. You say, what are you talking about? Well, first of all, for some reason, and I don't know the answer to this, I don't know why, but I can tell you, Sherry and I are eating better. I don't know if it's just because we don't have as many dishes or we don't have as much food or we're utilizing the space better in our refrigerator or whatever it is, we tend to be eating better. And we're not buying as much quantity of food because you don't have the space for it. So we find that we're eating much more balanced meals. We're actually not even eating out as much. And it's not that we can't afford it. We make just as much money as we did before. And I don't know the answer to this, and somebody else probably does, but our meals are better, and we're not snacking as much. And then when we do snack a little bit, they tend to be better snacks, like peanuts and nuts and things like that. I don't know why, but it's our phenomenon that's happening since we've been a full-timer. The other thing is you tend to shop smarter. Some people will say when you buy something, you have to give up something. Well, that's not necessarily true. I don't agree with that. But if you buy something, you better, first of all, make sure it's what you want, that you're going to use it, and you have the storage to keep it. So every time Sherry and I go shopping now, we have to think it through. You just can't do spontaneous shopping. So probably going back to the subject before then, I was talking about less debt. Well, if you're spending less, you're going to save money. And the two areas that I think Sherry and I can say we've been saving on, and we didn't even really try, is not eating out as much, 
So our grocery bills have gone up a little bit, but eating out has dropped dramatically. And we're not buying wasteful things. We really think it through. In fact, for some reason, we're even shopping better, comparing prices. So, like I said, we seem to be eating better. So, that would be better for, at least for Sherry and I, we're really starting to focus on our health and living longer. Because we have grandkids we got to go terrorize. And we're shopping much more smarter than we ever have before. Here's another phenomenon, I'll call it, that's been happening since we've become RVers. And to address the question, why be an RVer in the first place? Simple things seem new again. I'll say that again. Simple things seem new again, at least to me and Sherry. For example, we've discovered our bicycles again. They sat in the garage forever, but some reason why we're here, we're attracted to using our bikes again. Simple things. Walking. Sherry and I are walking at least two to three to four times a week, at least a mile or more for no reason other than going for a walk and taking the dog along. And by the way, when you go for a walk in an RV park, what normally would take a half hour to an hour will probably take an hour and a half to two because you got to visit with everybody that you meet. Told you. Uh, we're visiting more. Simple things like visiting with people. Sherry and I, I swear, we've forgotten how to meet people. We've forgotten to smell the roses, I guess. The other thing is games and cards. Sherry and I, we're still not big in playing cards or playing games, but we're doing it a little more, especially Yahtzee. I don't know what it is. But we never did that before either. We didn't have the time for it or just, I don't know, we got back to the house and it's like, oh, I don't want to play any games. The other thing that's kind of fun, and I've never done this before, but like I've talked about it in my other shows, we put a flag on our RV and we got RV Travel Buddy flag. And other folks, they'll use American flags or some of them will use seasonal flags. And you can also do banners. And in some cases you think, oh, that's kind of silly or childlike. But for some reason here and doing that, it's just been fun putting your flag up, putting little decorations, uh, something simple, because they don't really like you to do anything extravagant. A lot of people put lights on their RVs or uh, colored LEDs. It's just fun. So decorations. Sherry and I never did that kind of stuff before. We've also found that finding good camping gear we never really thought about our lawn chairs before. They were just like, ah, oh, they're $19.95, they're on sale, we'll use them till they break. Well, now it's like, oh, I want a good chair now. <laughs> and when it comes to a barbecue, you kind of like, oh, I need a good barbecue, but it's got to be small. And things I never thought about before. And then the final one, which is the funnest, <laughs> happy hour. Now, I understand a lot of people don't drink, but you can have a cup of coffee or tea or, or, uh, something that you enjoy but happy hour depending on where you're at is different in every RV park tends to be around four or five o'clock and unfortunately Sherry and I still work so we kind of miss that but uh, we have our own little happy hour and we never had one before but we feel a drive to do it now even if we're not with people we need just like to have you know some folks just like to have a glass of wine some people like to have a, a little snort, like Sherry and I, we tend to have like a spice rum and coke or something like that, but sometimes it's just a good cup of coffee sounds good, and for a snack, something good to eat, not potato chips and things, but things like cashews and nuts like that. So, like I said, some reason, simple things seem new again. And finally, I'd like to talk about the things I really like 
And some of these might seem simple to you, but maybe you can relate. But some of the things I really liked being an RVer and, and traveling is I actually got to go to places where it was quiet. Now sometimes it was like in the desert between Reno and uh, Las Vegas and you stop at a place and and it's a giant silence. You, you can still hear birds and little things like that but a silence you don't normally get when you're in a city type of area. And there's something special about that. And getting a view, I don't know why this, I guess you just can't see it that often in many areas, but for example, between say Reno and Las Vegas, and if you're going through Fallen, and you start traveling that distance in Nevada, well, you can see the road as far as you can see, and it looks endless. And in a lot of places, and I, I guess that's something that would be a phenomenon here in the Northwest. You can't see that far ahead. And some people, and I want to tell you about a phenomenon that happens that you may not be aware of, and you. It, if you live in the northwest or a place with a lot of trees, you'll understand this. But for a while, Sherry and I also lived in Central Oregon. And we'd drive from Washington and we'd have to go over the passes and all the trees. And you come over the mountains of like Mount Hood and the trees start thinning out. And pretty soon it's just junipers and in wide open spaces. And there's something about that where you go, oh, it just some reason it's like a big burden off your shoulders yet you don't even live in the area and it took us a long it took us a long time to figure out what that phenomenon was and it was you could see far i know it sounds kind of weird but like if you live in washington you'd be lucky to be able to see it a half a mile ahead or get a view of miles of of uh, property and land you can't see that very often in a place like where we live but when you get over in the high desert or even desert land and be able to see for a distance there's something that makes your soul feel really well good or well or healthy when you feel like you have some elbow room that's all I can that's the best way I could describe it it's and unless you travel you'll probably never know what I'm talking about the other things is when we traveled is it's fascinating to me and, and good and bad purposes reasons I, I would say is the animals and insects that you'll see that you probably never seen in your area in Washington we're pretty spoiled especially on the west side we don't have poisonous snakes we do have um, a couple spiders to be worried about but really we don't have much to worry about but when you start traveling to Nevada and some of these other places that actually have critters um, first of all you kind of scared of them a little bit because you're not used to them but you're also fascinated by them it's like I don't care if it's red ants that we've never seen the little red ants and sugar ants that was like we never dealt with those in Washington or I heard in um, Alabama you could get infested with ladybugs and and uh, of course you know there's uh, snakes and critters that we don't have here in Washington and it's funny it, we're even fascinated by seeing a cockroach because we don't really have them up here so to see one down say in Arizona it was like oh my gosh kind of creepy but at the same time it's like wow that's a cockroach <laughs> or when you're in Arizona when we're used to seeing a spider web and our spiders aren't real nasty or anything down there is like it's not unusual to find a lizard on your door um we don't have lizards running around here but it's different down there so i kind of like that kind of stuff it's different no i'm not saying it's nice but it's also it's just fascinating it's different i the other thing i kind of like is learning the region's problems 
some of the problems or the way that we see problems here in the West are a lot different than the South. And I just, I appreciate getting a better outlook and all that kind of stuff. Even politics and news, um, they're different. They're, every area is different. If you go to uh, Utah, you'll find their news and information a lot different since they tend to be Mormon oriented. Where you go down south, they're more into you know different issues down there. And up here in Washington, it's traffic and and high you know, high tech businesses and, and everything's different. And it's just it's just enlightening to get a better understanding of the United States. Foods. The different foods. <laughs> um, or even cuisine that we have up here in Washington, like Mexican food, is a lot different than down in Arizona, let's say. Or appreciation for wines and, and, uh, and barley and things like that. Um, places that grow apples and cherries and um, or how people uh, look at their resources like the redwoods and stuff it's it's all different and it's, it's really good to learn of course people are different too they act different in different areas some are more friendly more more curious more um, some are you know, some are not so curious and, and quiet but um, people's attitudes into different regions, small towns, big towns, medium towns. You can only get that if you're an RVer or a traveler of some sort. And of course, with an RV, you can stay in an area for a, a longer period of time and really get to know the region that you're in. You can't do that from a motel room. Um, the planning. I really enjoy planning a drive. It's, it's something neat about sitting down, figure out where all the gas stations are, where the rest areas are, where you can boondock if you need to, how long it's going to take to get from one point to another. It's fun. It's uh, planning and in and, and, and a successful trip from one point to another is, is uh, I, it's almost like a hobby. It's, it's fun. And being successful at it and being good at it makes the traveling that much better if you have uh, hobbies some of those can be enhanced by traveling in an RV for example Sherry and I enjoy photography and finding the time and then having new things to look at gives us purpose and of course we love making videos and of course having RV travel buddy and RV talk radio and and uh, RV Travel Quest and Amazing RV TV and all the other things we have. Uh, when we travel, it's endless of the things that we can show our viewers. And quality of pet time. Um, I found with Cinder, our chocolate lab, she makes some of these places we go even more special because She's a very friendly dog, and she makes for great conversation. People really like Cinder, and she's a beautiful dog. But uh, I also feel like I'm giving my pet, my dog, a quality of life that some dogs will never have. And I know that sounds silly, but you know our kids are gone and grown up and stuff, and so our pets are our kids. And so when we travel and we have our pet and we can enjoy her, um, of course, it's a, there's a responsibility of having a pet, too. It's something uh, that Sherry and I hold very dear. And, and, and the last thing I'd like to kind of talk about when it comes to answering why be an RVer? And my answer is, at my age, is I'm getting older and my health. Now, of course, that's not applicable to a family that's young and, and etc. But in some cases, it is. Not all young folks have good health. Maybe some people have uh, asthma issues, and and then maybe kids. Um, when you travel, it can be very inconvenient if you don't have a place where you can pull over and have a restroom and things like that. But the older you get, 
the more you find yourself sitting around a house and just the weekend comes and you just kind of just do simple things and and your your feet hurt a little more you may have knees or our hips are a little sore stuff in an RV you're comfortable and then the time that you have that you're feeling good or can get around it's just a few steps out the door and there you are in a place that you could have never been if you were stuck in a stick type home or apartment so getting older I feel it's healthy or healthier to still feel like you're mobile that you can still go see things even if you're slowing down or a few more aches and pains and and this is applicable to people that are younger too that may have elements that could cause them to be limited an RV will open up the world to you and allow you to see those beautiful lakes those beautiful sunsets those cities that you've always wanted to see and those eat the food that is unique to the south and and on and on <clears throat> And uh, the other thing when you're getting older, and, and this is a subject I know you go, what are you, oh, don't talk about that, Rob, but I'm sorry, but when you get older, you know, your plumbing is a little bit more um, uh, unpredictable, I'll use that word. And so having an RV kind of takes that worry away that you can travel a long period of time if you need some quality bathroom time or things like that, the RV is there. You're in your own home. You're comfortable. You're not in a stranger or a gas station where it might be dirty and filthy and things. And so that's true if you're young and have children too. It's like, Mom, I got to go. And now you can just pull over and let them use your bathroom, knowing that they're in a clean environment that gives you that peace of mind so I hope that was enlightening to you that's some information that we're sharing from our heart from me and Sherry to answering the question why even be an RVer well we apologize for being a little late with this show but I want to remind our listeners to start contacting us let us know what you'd like to talk about <coughs> we have a, a lot of things on our agenda coming up we'll be talking and doing a lot more interviews uh, won't be too long before we'll be on the road and be sharing some new experiences and so if you get the opportunity go to our website at rvtalkradio.com go to the contact page and you can leave us a message there or you can contact me directly at Rob, R-O-B, at rvtalkradio.com and shoot us a message that way. We also started a brand new RV Talk Radio group community page on Facebook. So if you go into Facebook and, talk, and type in RV Talk Radio, feel free to go in there, join the community, and we urge you to tell us your stories and share your experiences and help us grow the community. The other thing that's going on is RV, um, RV Travel Buddy, the website's been changed and it's, it's still got some bugs in it, but we've changed the format of RV Travel Buddy and it's online now and it's being tweaked so it's not perfect yet, but it's based more on we do more video interviews than we do text interviews so we want to put more emphasis on that to make it easier for you to find the videos at the same time articles can be done or are, are in there too <coughs> but the new feature we added to RV travel buddy is you can submit articles to us and videos on a submit button and of course we got to approve them first and we'll actually put you on the site if your information is uh, pertains to RVing and is um, tasteful and applicable. So we're kind of excited about that. So some of the other great things going on is uh, RV t uh, <laughs> amazing RV TV 
is starting to get very popular. And what that's designed to do is, is when we try our best. We only do a video once a month on that. And we go out and every once in a while we come across some fascinating videos. So we've uh, created a site <coughs> that pulls in what we think is amazing RV TV. And it's not just funny stuff or uh, terrible accidents. It also has cooking or really good cooking recipes and really good um, photography, things like that are in it. And we're also allowing outsiders to submit their videos. And if they are good quality videos and they are applicable to being what we would call amazing, we will approve them and put them in the site. We also own RVTravelVideos.com, which is a site where anybody can submit their RV videos and it's um, and categorize them properly, and you will have no problem getting approved in that one. That does, we're not looking for amazing; we're looking for down-to-earth, real RV videos. So that's been really fun, and it's been very successful for us. Another fun thing that we've started, and we're going to do a few more videos. We did a little teaser out there, and we probably didn't explain it very well. But if you've had a chance, you've seen that we have Cinder, the Chocolate Lab stuffed uh, puppies. And they're really cute. They're little brown Chocolate Labs uh, stuffed puppies. And they have a little scarf on them. And they say Cinder, her name, RV Travel Buddy on it. And it has a picture of an RV on it. And they are so cute. But what we're asking our listeners and our viewers to do is if you buy one of our puppies, which is to help raise money for us uh, for traveling, uh, for RV Travel Quest, <laughs> and uh, it goes through our company and goes into a special fund just for that purpose. Though we're asking our viewers and listeners to take the puppy and put it in your pictures as you travel. So then submit them to our Facebook for RV Travel Buddy or you can now put them on RV Talk Radio too and we thought that'd be a lot of fun one is that helps raise funds at the same time we can have a lot of fun with the cinder dog so we started a, we started it and uh, probably didn't do the best video just a little two minute video of what it could be like but we call our videos we're cinder and so they're just still photos and what we ask you to do is take the stuffed animal and put it in the background somewhere for people to see and just it just seemed like a fun thing to do so and then another little story i want to share with you is kind of funny and uh i posted it on our facebook and you might see it if you go to rv travel buddy uh facebook is i got a brand new seahawks um stocking cap it's and you know, we all follow our Seahawks pretty, pretty close up here, but I've never had a shirt or anything. Anyway, I kind of won this thing at the place I work. And it's a really nice hat. And it ha and this stocking hat had a little ball on the top of it, a little tassel thing. Well, I left it on the counter. And the next day, apparently the cat and dog uh, conspiracy was going on. And the cat knocked the hat to the floor and my dog chewed off the tassel and I had little strings of blue and green ta uh, tassel all over this RV. But the hat wasn't damaged at all. I, I don't know how she did it. But if you go to our Facebook and uh, scroll down a little bit, you'll see the pictures of, of the guilty face we got from Cinder. As we said, she was like, bad dog, you messed up dad's, dad's hat. Anyway, it was kind of cute, and I, I urge you to go look at that picture. It was pretty funny. And for the future of RV Talk Radio, we'll continue to do the job we're doing and getting better at it, I hope, and try to squeeze in as many uh, RV lifestyle interviews as possible. We want to put emphasis on more of the lifestyle. Uh, the other podcasts out there are really good about covering the industry and memberships and different organizations, and I tip my hat to them. They've been in RVing for a long time, um, and it, I, 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 I'm not going to try to outdo them on those subjects. 
what we want to bring here with RV Talk Radio is the lifestyle. Not just for folks my age. We're talking young single folks to married couples, married couples with kids, um, and different scenarios of why and how RVs are being utilized. That will continue to be our goal. So our theme is going to be the RV lifestyle. So I I hope that kind of clarifies what our purpose is with this radio station. And we want to be down to earth. We're just normal folks talking about something we really enjoy and want to share with other people. And we hope you feel the same way. We have, as a company, also invested in the company in some really good equipment. Now you can kind of tell with our show here as we're using the RV, and we're keeping the equipment kind of basic right now, but we have bought very good podcast equipment and mixers, and we use a very good recording device when we go interview folks. The problem is, is we're not setting it up yet because we may be heading south, and I hate to get all that equipment set up here in the RV, and I will if I have to, and you'll see a, 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 a big quality change in our sound and backgrounds and things like that and and, and mixing of our music and stuff. So I I appreciate your patience with that. We're aware of it and we we don't need to be scolded. We've been to schools. We've been studying what we need to do to make a better podcast. We have invested in the equipment and we are ready to go. We're just don't really want to set up the studio right away so I hope once again that you'll be patient with us with our sound quality and of course I want to take the time to thank our sponsor uh, RV lock for the keyless entry systems that they make we have one on our RV we did a video about how to install it and Sherry did it and we've had it for a couple of weeks now and we love it it really gives you a peace of mind and it does cause you to lock things up even when you're just going to be gone for a short time because it's no big deal. You just push a button and it locks. But if you don't have your remote with you and stuff, you just put in a keypad of, of getting in and out. It's an awesome. And of course, if you're worried about power, uh, it has a key too. Yeah, so it's, it's keyless. You can use a key and it has a remote and it's a very secure system and we're very pleased with it so once again i'm proud and pleased and can stand behind the product of rv lock we are also been fortunate enough to be able to offer you a discount on that so if you go to um, the link on the description of this uh, podcast or if you just go to RV talk, uh, RV travel buddy, <laughs> sorry, uh, and go to our products review. There's a link right there. It'll take you over to the site. And if you use the code that's on the site there, you'll get a savings of $54.99 and you'll save a lot of money. So it's very much worth it. And I highly recommend you get one. And then right now they're only good for trailers, fifth wheels, and campers. We also want to urge our listeners to, once again, get in contact with us. Tell us your stories. Post things on our uh, sites, uh, RV Travel Buddy or RV Talk Radio on Facebook. And we Twitter and we do all the things and we have G Plus accounts. And we uh, and not to mention, please take the chance, go, uh, take the opportunity to go look at our videos. Um, the other thing is we're always open to partnering with people, working together, helping each other. If you have an RV resource, a product, or your writer, and you'd like to put your stuff on our platforms, we are very open to that. RV Travel Buddy and RV Talk Radio is designed to enhance the experience of an RVer. So we're not trying to suck people into all of our platforms as we are is our platforms as a tool to find the resources you want and need or enjoy. So look at RV Travel Buddy as your buddy. Your buddy would tell you the best way to get things, the best people to talk to, the best sites to go to. They say a good leader is surrounded by smart people and that's the attitude we take. We're just 
a leader and we'll we're surrounded with people that make wonderful podcasts wonderful videos wonderful blogs great articles and we uh, stand behind them and we are the first ones to say go check them out so I want to take the time to thank you for listening to RV Talk Radio. I hope you enjoyed this show. It came from the heart a little bit. I want to thank all the people and resources out there that people are doing today and the great videos that are coming out every day from all kinds of people. And if I haven't mentioned your site or I've overlooked you completely, please contact us and tell us about what you do, what you're videos are about what your blogs are about we'll be happy to share your information and i want to thank uh the rv park here that i'm staying at they've been telling us about some of the people that are coming into this rv park and it was like oh my goodness the world is changing a lot so once again thanks for listening i'm rob scribner join us next week uh, we try to launch our v um, our podcast on Fridays. I'm late. I apologize. Uh, lots of things going on. So once again, have a great day. And the saying we have over here, what are you waiting for? Bye now.